Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today's in this discourse we would like to Kashmiri marriages, singing and Islam. Recently I visited uh, and attended a couple of weddings in Kashmir. Weddings mean entertainment, enjoying and having a good time for relatives, neighbors, friends and especially for uh, women who celebrate by singing and praising the bride and groom. This is common culture in Kashmir. These gatherings are free from modern night clubs, alcoholic drinks and present day pub cultures. Only Kashmiri tea and kahwa is serving, served during these gatherings. During my stay, some of my friends asked me about these gatherings and the singing within those gatherings. They were saying that they were listening from the imams and scholars uh, that Prophet wasallam have made music prohibited. I replied to them that nothing is haram except which has been declared haram by Allah and his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now the question is, what is singing or music? In literal sense, singing is the act of creating musical sounds with the voice. In other words, singing is no more than melodious words. If these words are good, singing is considered good. But if they are bad, such singing is deemed bad. Talk that contains forbidden content is prohibited. What if the talk is accompanied with rhythm and melody? Islam permits singing under the condition that is not in any way indecent or harmful uh, to the Islamic morals. Scholars agree on the permissibility of singing without instrumental accompaniment and where the content is not prohibited. This sort of singing is allowed only in certain occasions such as weddings, feasts and welcoming a traveler and the like. This is based on the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ibn Abbas narrated that the Asha Siddiqa Raziallahu Ta'ala Anha gave away one of, the, one of her relatives in marriage uh, to a man among the Ansar. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, came and said the attendants, did you send them a girl, means that you married a girl within the Ansar. They said, yes, Ya Rasul Sallallahu The Prophet said, did you send someone to sing with her? The Asha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha said, no. The Prophet said, certainly the Ansar are the people who love poetry. So you should send someone along with her to say, here we come, to you we come, greet us as uh, greet, we greet you. This hadith is Sunni Ibn Majah uh, number 1900. In this case, we can say that the woman can sing only in front of the woman and her male kids. In the subject, subject of musical instrument scholars, disagree on the matter, we can divide them into three categories. One, someone, some of them uh, permit all sort of singing, be it accompanied with the musical instruments or not, even consider it recommended. A second group of scholars permit singing only when is not accompanied with the musical instrument. 
a third group uh, declare it prohibited. They even consider it as a major sin. In supporting their view, they cite the hadith narrated by Imam al-Bukhari on the authority of Abu Malik or Abu Amir al-Ashari that the Prophet said, from among my followers there will be some people who will consider illegal sexual intercourse, the wearing of silk clothes, the drinking of alcohol, and the use of musical instruments as lawful. Although this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari, its chain of transmission is not connected to the Prophet wasallam, and this invalidates its authenticity. Many scholars of the sinus of Hadith methodology have declared it very weak, zaif. However, this Hadith does not clearly prohibit the use of musical instruments. In the light of this discussion, the religious texts that stand as a basis for those who maintain that singing is haram are either ambiguous are inauthentic. None of the hadiths attributed to the Prophet wasallam is valid as evidence on the judgment of prohibition. Moreover, all these hadiths are declared weak by the followers of Imam Ibn Hazm, Imam Malik, Imam Hanbal, and Ash-Shafi rahimahumullah ta'ala. The same view is maintained by Al-Ghazali rahimahullah ta'ala. Ibn Hazm says all the hadiths narrated in this respect were invented and fabricated. Now let us see those who maintain that the singing is halal. Their base of argument is on the some, on some authentic uh, hadith of the Prophet I cannot count them all of them. There are hundreds of the hadiths and uh, uh, events as well. One of these hadiths, uh, hadith is the Asha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha narrated that the Prophet وسلم, came to my house while two girls uh, from the Ansar were singing beside me the songs of the battle of Boaz, Jangi Boaz. The Prophet وسلم, laid down and turned his face to the other side. Then his father Abu Bakr Siddiq ta'ala, anhu, came and spoke to me harshly saying, musical in instruments of a shaitan near the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Thereupon Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam turned his face towards him and said, "Leave them what they are doing." When Abu Bakr radiallahu taala anhu uh, became inattentive, I signaled uh, to those girls to go out, and they left. This hadith is also in Bukhari. Moreover, we can also cite as verifying this from the Quran that read in Surah Al-Jumah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَإِذَا رَعَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْ فَضُّ إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا Surah Al-Jumah, ayat number 11. No sooner than they saw some trading or amusement, they flocked, jumped towards that, to it and left you uh, standing yourself, Ya Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tell them that which is with Allah is far better than amusement and the trading. In this holy verse of the Quran, Allah Almighty joins activity with merchandise. He does not dispraise any of them. He just only rebuked the companions who left the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alone giving the khutbah, the Friday sermon. When they all rushed to attend the caravan and beating the drums uh, celebrating its arrival. Thus Islam left nothing good or sound but declared it to be halal.
love. This is a sign of mercy to this ummah, the community, moving along the line of its comprehensive and internal, eternal message. Allah Almighty says, they ask you, Ya Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what is made halal for them? Say, all good things are made halal for them. Surah Maida, ayat number 4. If we investigate deeply into this matter, we will find that love for singing and melodic voices are almost human instinct. We can observe an infant lying in his cradle, calmed and sleeping by the sound of a lullaby. Uh, mothers and the nannies are always in the habit of singing for babies and children. Thereupon, if singing is a human instinct, it is not for Islam to challenge a humankind's instincts. Islam came to refine and promote the human instinct. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah ta'ala says, prophets were sent to polish and discipline man's instinct and not to change or modify it. Moreover, if singing is to be considered rejoicing and play, these are not haram. This is in pursuant uh, to the famous idea that a man needs some time to relax a bit and rejoice. The Prophet wasallam said his companions, one of his companions, uh, Hanzala radiallahu ta'ala anhu, O oh, Hanzala, part of your time should be devoted to the worldly affairs and part of your time should be devoted to prayer and meditation. This hadith is reported by Sahih Muslim. Apart from that, the companions, Ali bin Abi Talib ta'ala anhu says, amuse yourselves for some time, for if hearts are exposed to much strain, they turn blind. Abu Darda ta'ala anhu said, I refresh myself with some amusement in order to make myself stronger on the path of the right, right path, means on Islam. Ibn Jafar ta'ala anhu saw nothing wrong in singing, he, and he himself used to compose the music for his own slaves, who used to sing these melodies in his presence. Imam Ghazali rahimullah ta'ala narrates the consensus of the scholars uh, on the permissibility, permissibility of the singing is fine. Imam Ghazali answered one of a person who came to ask asked him, is not singing some kind of play and rejoice? He said, yes, yes, why not? But all that exists in this present life, in the world life, is mere play and rejoice. All that takes place between husband and wife is play, except sexual intercourse. That is the direct cause of reproducing children, generations. In addition to this, the people of Medina, they were so pious, very pious and God-fearing community. Sahabikun al-Awwalun, the people who were living with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the Sufis who were very, who are very strict and rigid in their traditions, were all quoted to have declared the permissibility of singing. I believe these proofs are on the permissibility of singing are sufficient to clarify the issue. Wallahu alam bisawab. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand our deen and our religion in proper way. Jazakumullah khair. If anybody has any question, he can put in the comments. Inshallah, I will reply them. Jazakumullah khair.